to get this thing started a man, week from Sunday? Man, I cannot wait. You know, um, I'm just sitting here, you know, watching these Personal young guys um, perform. Unnecessary um, roughness. Embracing their opportunities and, you know, trying to do the best, trying to play the best way they can possibly play, you know, to make this football team. Does this is Babe Loffenberg all throughout training camp. Everybody wants to know, okay, how's your timing and rapport going with Tony? You guys getting it back. Now that question becomes, how's your timing and rapport with Dak Prescott? So what's the answer to that? Hey, it's extremely loud in here. I can barely hear you. Can you um, please repeat that question again? Sorry, yes, sir. I just saying, everybody wanted to know in the summer, in training camp, how's your rapport going with Tony? And now, as of last week, it becomes, how's your rapport with Dak Prescott? So how is that? Well, you know, um, during training camp, you know, me and Tony, you know, we always been good. And, um, you know, um, we were just really just knocking off the rust on some things, and we got ourselves together. But, um you know, at the same time, whenever Tony took a break, um, you know, Dak could step in, you know, and, um, you know, our timing, including the other White House timing, you know, um, has come along real good. This is just Michael. You know, what I find interesting is I think back, you know, when you first came in, Des, it was, it, it was you and you had Tony Romo and DeMarco Murray, which means you were the young guy grabbing all the food you can from those old guys. Now it's you, Dad Prescott, and Ezekiel Elliott, which means you are the old guy. Now you're feeding the young guys. How much do you think about that transition? Now, hold on now, Mike. Let's correct one thing. Now, I'm still a young guy. I'm still a young guy. <laughs> you know, uh, man, um, you know, um, you know, my biggest thing and you know, for those two guys is, you know, like I told them, um, you know, be relaxed, you know, just come in and do what you've been doing, you know, be monsters, take advantage of this opportunity, you know, be great, make your mark, you know, and um, you know, I really believe that, and those guys have done that, and they can only get better for those two. They have to come in and do some damage. That's when I'm watching you on the football field now, and, 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 you know, we haven't had a chance to talk about it much, but I'm watching you from afar, and it just looks like it's all come together right now. You know it. You know you feel like you can go out on the football field and dominate at any time. How true is that? And it's extremely true. You know, I feel like um, whenever I broke my foot, you know, I learned some things. You know, um, you know, it's like it's not that football didn't mean that much to me, but it made me just work a little bit harder. And you know, I feel good. You know, my confidence level, you know, it's extremely high. I'm excited. I'm excited for our teammates. We have, you know, we've been having extreme, extreme fun at training camp and at the star, you know, um, on and off the field, just everywhere. And I just think that's the sacrifice, you know, we've made, you know, with each other to make each other, you know, even better, you know, on and off the field. So I'm gonna take, we're gonna take that and just move forward and, you know, try to become the best team that we can possibly be. And we're gonna stand behind these young guys, um, Zeke and Dak, and you know to take on this challenge. And does this is Babe Laufenberg again. And after that first game, you had the great couple of great catches against the Rams. I, I went up during the week and I told Dak Prescott, great throws, but you do know when the regular season starts, Des Bryant is not getting one-on-one -on -one press coverage when the regular season begins. <laughs> well, well, you know, um, in a way I think I am just because uh, I think they're going to see how real the, you know, I'm, they're going to try to see how real Dak really is and you know, once they line me up one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to see how real Dak really is because I'm <laughs> yeah. going to come through for him. And, you know, when they start to double me, and I go Terrence, I go Beasley, I go Witt, I go Bryce, you know, you can just pick your poison. You can have it however you want. You know, and we're ready to go. And, 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 and as we were talking about that earlier, I said most teams are going to come in and say, hey, let's take the easiest road away, which is the run game in Ezekiel Elliott, and, and they'll leave some opportunities outside for Des Bryant. And once he makes those opportunities, then they'll start covering, trying to double cover him. So you will have early opportunities. How important is it to have early success? You know, it's extremely important. You've got to stop his dominance on first play. And that's one thing that I've been trying my best to get across to the guys is establish dominance on the first play. And, you know, once you do that, you need to let them boys know that, hey, it's for real. You know, be coming out here to play. Hey, Des, uh, last week you weren't able to make the trip to Seattle, but I know you were watching on television. Yes, sir. What do you think of Zeke, and how excited do you get after you see his seven carries in that game against Seattle last week? You know, he established dominance. That's something I had I already knew that he was going to do. And, you know, once I seen, and, and once I seen him get in, um, 
Chancellor's face, I knew he was ready. It got me, it got me hyped. I wish I was there on the sidelines. I probably would have ran out to the sideline and got in Chancellor's face as well. You, you see what he see, see what he did. That, that was the best part of it for me too. You know, I know days like you. I could take that information to the sideline and get the rest of those boys hyped. When a young dude running the chancellor like that, I'm like, dude, man, I, you're helping me get these guys hyped. That's exactly my thought. That's what you were thinking. Yes, sir. Now tell us the truth. Were you just sitting down watching that, or did you get up out of your chair when you saw? I was standing up. Yeah, I stand I up. <laughs> I stand up the whole time. I, I, I lose my mind. It's like I feel it. I feel the rush. I'm telling you, Mike. I know. You, I know you know that feeling. I know you know that feeling. You know, I felt the rush. You know, every big play that we made. You know, I'm just all in tool like if I was there. You know, um, football is exciting. You know, especially when you're seeing your teammates have to perform that way. And you know. You know, like, the sky's the limit from here on out, man. It's like, I think we're ready. No, I don't think. I know we're ready. It's our year. For real. Hey, Des, this offseason, uh, the 388s got together mm -hmm. for a great uh, production called Deep Blue 88. It was you, Michael Irvin, and Drew Pearson. What was that like for you? Man, for me, that's one of the best experiences I ever experienced, you know, being a cowboy. You know, getting the opportunity to sit around, you know, Michael Irvin and Drew Pearson, you know, those guys who, who have a Super Bowl ring and just, you know, a guy like me just trying to, you know, um, get one of those as well. And, man, you know, I learned that, you know, I, I just thought it was crazy. And, it, you know, if I can get one, if I can get one of those rings and hopefully we can sit down and do the deep blue 88 again, you know, <laughs> I think that'd be pretty damn cool. Yeah, and it was, guys. It, it was a great opportunity to sit down and just reminisce about yesterday and the possibility of what's going to happen tomorrow. Des, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thank you all.